Hello and welcome to my YouTube. This YouTube is on user data on an E463 keyboard. What is it and how would you use it? Hi, I'm your host, Maury Reese. I've been using keyboards and synthesizers for 49 years. I have made over a hundred YouTube tutorials just on the E463 keyboard, and this is my latest one. So let's get going. On page 72 of the E463 owner's manual, you read this. This is where you learn about user data, how to save it, and how to load it. I'm going to expand on that in this YouTube because I know a lot of people never read their manuals. So let's start with what is user data? It's actually three things. First, it's your 10 user songs, which are songs number 31 through number 40, that you may have recorded yourself or perhaps you downloaded from the web and stored in your E463 keyboard. So it's those 10 songs and it's 10 styles that you may have downloaded from the web and then loaded from a computer, an iPhone, or an iPad, or an Android into your E463. These are styles number 236 through 245. And it is all 32 of your current registration memory settings. If you don't know what that means, go watch my YouTube that I put up just yesterday on registration memories and what they are and how to use them. Now, here's the deal. User data is all of this. It is these 10 songs and these 10 styles and these 10 registration memories. If you say, well, you know, more, I don't use registration memories. That's okay. If you download or store your user data, it's going to at least give you your 10 songs and your 10 styles if you use them. My point is, this is what is possibly included. So if you use this stuff, it's going to be saved when you save it. So how could you use user data? Here's reason number one. Let's say you play for a church every Sunday morning. Let's say you have recorded 60 church hymns, which are actually MIDI files, on your E463 keyboard, and it took you several weeks to record all those hymns. Now, during church, you will play the melody for each song during the church service and use your 60 uh, MIDI files as your backup group. What if you could load any one of six sets of 10 hymns into your E463 keyboard in just 12 seconds? Here's reason number two. You're going to play for a dance, and you will be using 31 custom styles that you have downloaded from a website. It takes an experienced E463 player about a minute to load in just one custom style into the E463 keyboard. You don't want your audience to just stand around for 37 to 38 minutes during the dance getting bored while you mess around loading in your 31 custom styles. What if you could load in 10 new custom styles at a time in 12 seconds? Reason number three. You've been asked to play for three hours at a cocktail party. You have selected 60 songs that each take about three minutes to play. You have carefully created a list of keyboard settings 
such as the main voice, the style, the transpose, the harmony, the dual voice, the split voice, the reverb, your tempo, and your chorus. You've done that for each of the 60 songs. Now, you need to keep the music going constantly. So you can't afford to stop the music repeatedly while you fuss around and take several minutes to set up each song. I mean, how long would it take you, starting from scratch, to make all of these settings? Several minutes. Or, what if you could load in 32 complete song settings in just 12 seconds? And you could using user data. Reason number four. You sat down at your keyboard for several days and you figured out all the settings for 32 rock songs, 32 country songs, 32 dance songs, 32 Latin songs, 32 rhythm and blues songs, and 32 hymns. And you want to save all these settings so you can load them into your E463 in just a few seconds. What if you could load in 32 song settings at a time in just 12 seconds? And you can using user data. So where do you save the user data files to? To a USB thumb drive, which you plug right into the back of your keyboard. That's where everything is saved. So how do you save a user data file out into the USB thumb drive? Let me take you through the steps. And the good news is they're simple. This is what we're going to look for on our screen. So first of all, Hold down the function button for about two seconds and then select save user. This is what we need to see on our screen. Once you've done that, then you're going to press the execute button to actually save it, to do it. Okay, that button right here. Now, let me show you what's going on inside that thumb drive. This is a look inside the thumb drive. I took my thumb drive out of my keyboard and plugged it into my Macintosh. What happens is when you do a save user file, your keyboard creates this folder on the thumb drive you have plugged into the back. It creates this folder and it calls it user files. Let me take you inside and show you what could be there. This is my user file. I have seven user files all stored on this thumb drive. In other words, seven different times, maybe over seven different days, I stored my user files. And these are all inside that one folder that was created by my keyboard. That's how the the data is stored on the thumb drive. All right, let's go the other way. So I've stored all of these user data files out on a thumb drive, and I come back in a week or two, and now I want to load one of those into my keyboard. How do you do it? It's very similar to the way that we saved it out there. First of all, we're going to hold the function button for about two seconds, and we're looking for this, load user. Okay, this is what you need to call up on the screen after you hold the function button, load user. When you do that, then what you're going to do is use the rotary dial to select which user dial you want to load into your E463. In my example, I have seven different user files. And this is what it will look like on your screen. So you're sitting here with your rotary dial, and as you dial it through, you're going to see the names 
of all of the user files that you have saved on your thumb drive. There may be only one, there could be two or three. In my case, I've got seven and I get to choose which one I want to load in right now. Okay, and again, you will use the execute button to actually cause it to load in after you've chosen which one you want. Let's go on. So let's review. Each user data file contains the three things that I mentioned. First of all, it contains the 10 user MIDI songs that you have created. Or perhaps you downloaded them off of the web. It will contain the 10 custom E463 styles that you have probably downloaded off of some website. And it will contain the 32 registration memory settings. And once again, if you don't know what those are or how to use them, go look at my YouTube that I put up just yesterday on registration memory. So user data contains all of these things. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Now, go make some music.